So I have three charges situated as shown in the diagram. And by the way, you might be wondering, if I have these three charges here, why don't they just start moving around? I mean, they're exerting forces on each other. Well, let's pretend that I've glued them there so they can't move anywhere. And you're supposed to find the force, both the magnitude and the direction, on Q2 due to Q1 and Q3. So let's take a look at our picture here and pick a coordinate system. How about something like this? Not too good, right? It's like a tilted thing, none of the charges are on any of the axes, it would be a real pain to work with. You could do it, but it just isn't very practical. So let's try something more like this. I think that looks better. Okay, so now that we have our picture here, let's draw a free body diagram for Q2. So what forces are acting on Q2? Well, we have Q1 exerting a force on Q2, and both Q1 and Q2 are positive, so that's gonna be a repulsive force. So on Q2, that force is going to point down. Then we have the force from Q3. Q3 is negative, so that's going to be an attractive force. So the force that Q2 feels from Q3 is going to point to the right. So I've labeled these forces F1 and F3 for the charges Q1 and Q3. Now we can use Coulomb's law to calculate the magnitude of each of these forces. So for force 1, Coulomb's law says K Q1 Q2 over R squared. K is just a constant, it's 9.0 times 10 to the 9th newtons times meters squared per coulomb squared. Q1, Q1 is 70 microcoulombs, a microcoulomb is 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, so that's 70 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And then Q2 is 60 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Finally, the distance between them is 40 centimeters, that's 0.4 meters, and you have to remember to square that. So when you calculate this, you get 236.25 newtons. I can do the same thing for F3. This time it's going to be KQ2Q3 over R squared. K is the same. Q2 is 60 times 10 to the negative 6. And Q3 is negative 50 microcoulombs. But since I'm only dealing with magnitudes here, I'm going to leave out the negative and just make it 50 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And then R squared, well, R is L, that's 40 centimeters, so that'll be 0.4 meters squared. And then I get 168.75 newtons for F3. Okay, so now that I know F1 and F3, I could write my answer for the net force in unit vector notation like this. But since it asks us to find both the magnitude and the direction, I should find each of those separately. To get the magnitude, I can use the Pythagorean theorem, essentially, and I get F net equals 168.75 newtons squared plus negative 236.25 newtons squared, and then the square root of all that, and that gives me 290 newtons. To get the direction, I can take the inverse tangent of F net Y component over F net X component, and so that's the inverse tangent of negative 236.25 newtons over 168.75 newtons. And that's negative 54.5 degrees or 54.5 degrees below the positive x-axis. And that makes sense. If you imagine adding F1 and F3, you would get something that's pointing below the positive x-axis.